Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to go over how we can calculate the weighted average of a series of interest rates in Excel. This came up in class a couple days ago where we were looking at different debt sources so we could figure out a payment schedule, uh, payoff schedule, things like that. And I wanted to get a little bit of basic information for our ultimate payment calculator. And so we've got a, a handful of debt sources here. Doesn't matter where they are. They could be car loans, student loans, personal debts, and things like that. There's various amounts for each of the debt sources, and there's various interest rates for each of those debt sources. And off to the side, I just want to calculate some of our data. So for instance, the total debt, and we'll just hit the auto sum button. We'll select all of our debt sources, sum those up. There we go. So this particular person has just under 25K in debt. Uh, what is the average interest rate? Well, again, I'm gonna use my auto sum dropdown, but I'll choose average. I'll use my mouse to select all of the various rates, get an average of those cells, and we see the average interest rate is 9.4%. Now, in class, ultimately, this is what we used in our payment calculator to figure out a payment schedule, just so we'd have a, a generalized interest rate to go with. But it's not the most accurate. Really, what we should be calculating is the weighted average, and I kind of gave this as an impromptu extra credit for students, just, hey, go determine what the weighted average um, interest rate would be for this series of debts. So let's go ahead and calculate that. The weighted average is different than a regular average because it's going to take into consideration the proportion of debt for a particular interest rate. So if our 12% debt was 50000 and none of the other debts or none of the other debts have anything or under 100 bucks or something like that, then the weighted average rate is gonna be closer to 12 because that's where practically all of the debt is. It's gonna be easier to illustrate this once we get our, our result in here and then we can look at the numbers and how they affect weighted average. So weighted average is actually pretty easy. You can type it out in longhand, which sometimes I do just to kind of illustrate the parts, but basically what you would be doing there to calculate it longhand just a formula, you'd be taking the proportion of an individual debt compared to the total debt, so 4,000 divided by 24,000, and that would give you a percentage. And you'd multiply that percentage by that particular interest rate, and it would be some number less than the interest rate. And then you would do the same thing for each debt source, and you would get all of these proportions of the interest rate, and then you would add all those up together and that would give you the weighted average. But we can use a couple functions in Excel to make our life pretty easy. I'm gonna start off with equals sum product. Now, when you sum product, it'll multiply a series of numbers together, and if these numbers are in two arrays, similar sized arrays, perfect, it's gonna work great for us. So the first array we wanna select are all of our debt amounts, and that's gonna put the range for me, B2 to B7, and I'm gonna press my comma key, in order to put in my second array, and that's gonna be all of the various interest rates, okay? Now I'm done with this part, some product. So I've got these multiplications taken care of, and if we were doing this longhand, that's what we would do, right? We'd have to figure out um, the proportion of the individual debt compared to its interest rate. So we still need to get the total debt in there, so I'm gonna divide this by, now we have a choice. I could divide it by a sum of all the debts, you know, so we could just do something like this, sum B2 to B7, and that would be perfectly accurate. Now, of course, I happen to have my total debt off to the side, so it'll end up with the same result. I can just, of course, divide by where my total debt figure is, press my Enter key, and there we go. So we see the weighted average for this particular debt scenario is 11.5% compared to the average, which is only 9.4%. Now, the reason the weighted average is gonna give us a much more accurate response because right now, the regular average is factoring in that this 0% debt, maybe it's a personal loan, is simply equal in weight to all the other debts, and that's clearly not the case. So, for instance, if this 0% debt was zero dollars, it has no impact on the average, but it has a tremendous impact on the weighted average. Let me put that back so we can see that. So at $850, the weighted average is 11.5%. If there's no personal debt, changes to 11.9. 
What if there's a lot of personal debt? Maybe it's uh, 50,000. Now the weighted average drops to 3.9 because so much of the debt is tied up into a 0% interest rate loan. So the weighted average is definitely going to give us a much more accurate representation of what we're dealing with if we have a handful of different debts at different interest rates. Take care.